Tell me your name and the city and state you live in. My name is Peggy and I live in Glendale, Arizona. Tell me a little bit about your background and the careers of both you and your husband, Dwayne. Well, both of us are teachers. We're te we, you never stop being a teacher. We are teachers. And we met at McAllister College in St. Paul, Minnesota, where I, I'm going to cry. It's okay. No. Yes, it is. It's okay. You can cry. You can cry. Tell me a little bit about uh, your background and the careers that you and Dwayne have. We are both teachers, and our background, we met at McAllister College when I was a junior in college, and he was returning from the Army and enrolled in to get a, a master's degree, mm -hmm. and we just, we, we met on a blind date. Okay. All right. So. And so you're both teachers. Yes. You were both teachers. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, Dwayne was a coach. Correct. I believe, yes. too. Yes. 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 And what, um, what classes were you teaching? What education? I started level? out in elementary. We moved to Idaho as soon as, we, right after we were married after I graduated from college and I was teaching second grade and he was teaching in the junior high school anything that he could. I think that year he was coach, he was definitely coach, football coach football. and basketball and he taught math and history and wow. and I taught third, second grade and uh, wow. so that's how I just, yeah. Uh-huh, yeah. And like you said, you're always a teacher. Yes, always a teacher. <laughs> always a teacher, which is a great quality, you know, for uh, both of you. How many children do you have? We have three and boys. Three boys. Mm -hmm. And grandchildren. Five grandchildren. Okay. May I ask what their reaction was and um, is today when they f found out that their father, grandfather, uh, had Alzheimer's, dementia, a little bit of both, I think you've said to me, or what is it? Is there a he was never He was never diagnosed. He was evaluated, and the first evaluation was mild to moderate dementia. Okay. And they think maybe it's vascular, which is frontal lobe, which is short-term memory. Okay. And that's what he exhibited when he was evaluated, was extreme short-term okay. memory loss. So um, they were very accepting. They could see, too. Sure. You know, it's a long process. Yeah. Um, about, let's see, Patrick's my About seven years ago, I was, we were in Minnesota for my grandson's graduation, and I asked my daughter-in-law, who who's, didn't go to college because she stayed home with her grandmother, who was, had Alzheimer's, and she, so she quit school to do that. And so I, I knew she had some background, and I said, so Mary, do you notice anything about Dwayne and I as we're getting older? <laughs> and uh -huh. she said, she turned around, she didn't even look at me, and she said, let me put it this way, you're aging better than he is. So I thought, Jesus, uh -huh. <laughs> she, she's seeing what I see. Yeah. And that was, that was it. That was and then it was just uh, waiting, and there were days that were good. And sure, sure. And what did you see? What kind of things? I mean, I mean, as, the elderly, oh gosh, I don't know, it could be 50 years old, it could be 45, forget things or yes. end things. But what did you see that was different? A change in personality, mostly. Okay. Um, less interest in things, less, more dependent on okay. me, okay. Uh, less conversation. And he and it wasn't much to begin with, so these changes were very subtle. Yeah, yeah because he was quiet. he's always been quiet, very mm -hmm. dependent on me, mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. and so it was very very subtle. But it was, didn't come to a, a surprise to anyone in the family because mm -hmm. it it by the time he was diagnosed, it was several years, and we would visit when when we would visit because one family's in Germany and the others in Minnesota and then one son is here. But when we would visit, it was a, a many months before, since they had seen him before. So they would notice a, a more of a dip change than I would be able to explain because I saw him every day and there were very subtle changes, mm -hmm. but they would notice it more. They, nobody ever talked about it until 
-hmm. I announced that I was having him evaluated, and they went, yeah, Mom, we know. <laughs> yeah, oh, okay, okay, yeah. And that's what happens in families, don't you find that people just sort of can't talk about yeah. that part? I, from my experience living where we do in the, in, in the senior living environment, yes. I have noticed that daughters are different than sons in most cases. Um, okay. Because I think they're a little bit more, res they're not as ready to accept the, the changes of their aging parents, you know? Uh, um, yeah. But yeah. the boys are just like, yeah, Mom, oh, we got it. We got it. Oh, <laughs> so. isn't that cute? That's interesting that yeah. you say that. And this is great because different people will be listening to this interview that some can relate with mm -hmm. what you're talking about and not all things, and then some can, others will relate and say, oh, yeah. That's what I'm experiencing. So uh, right away, of course, I will at the end, but I, I thank you for doing oh, this. Oh, sure, because, no problem. Yeah. Because this is important uh, for uh, so many people to, to uh, know and hear. I think every experience <clears throat> is different, obviously, because every person is different, and your relationship with whoever is, if, whether it be a male or female, whether it be the which spouse mm -hmm. is different. Mm -hmm. um, I've been doing a lot of reading of other people's experiences and what I've noticed is that men are way more, it's much more difficult for men to lose that spouse than the women seem to handle it better. Okay. And I think it's because most men are more dependent on their wives. In, in, I'm not saying every case, but right. generally speaking, okay. that's the way it is, I okay. think. All right, yep. We're different. Yep. Men and women are different. Every, every, so we're gonna, <laughs> yes, right. So we handle so many situations differently. Right. Good point. Yeah. Good point that you brought up. Okay. We all have deep thoughts in our mind, and sometimes it's easier to express them than other times or even than other individuals. May I ask you, when you had these thoughts, because you and Dwayne were together just the two of you, a lot. Was it open when he had the diagnose? From, he knew, right? The doctor diagnosed him, and he, he knew what he had. Yes. Is that right? Yes, I was surprised with that um, when he was diagnosed. When he evaluated him, um, he, I said, should I leave the room? And he said, no. And then when he was all done, Dwayne was sitting there, and he said, well, you have mild to moderate D uh, dementia and I want you know now he knows yeah. and so that was that surprised me that the doctor would uh, let him know that and yet I think that's a good thing mm -hmm. um, not that he fully understood it perhaps but he did uh, he knew he knew there was something going on with himself okay he was uh, I think he was aware of that okay. of the changes you know so, because after we moved from our home and we were truly retired because we had both been substitute teaching for 14 years after we moved to Arizona. And we were both very busy and going different places. But when we moved to the senior living place, we were attached to the hip. And he never left my side mm -hmm. unless he had to. Mm -hmm. And he didn't like that. So that, I noticed that. But then I just thought that that was because I didn't tie it to dementia, I tied it to we're retired and this happens to retired people. You change your relationship when you're together all the time. But, but then looking back on that, that was dementia too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. the changes of behavior. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Um, may I also ask, did you two openly talk about it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So, cause yes. That could be important. Because when, when I told my, oldest mm -hmm. son and uh, he said and where is he the oldest one? in Germany in Germany yeah. he's the one in Germany yeah and he said well then sign get get a get, you need to get on a waiting list for assisted living mom now mm -hmm. I said, okay and so I did mm -hmm. but I got him and he knew that he I said you have you've heard the doctor he said you have dementia it's going to be worse as we go along it's not going to get better and so we're going to make plans and we're going to get 
get a waiting. And he says, okay, I get that. I understand that. So he was very okay with that. But, you know, he went on and on and on. And we always talked about that. I know I'm going to have to go someday, mm -hmm. but not now. No, oh, cute. <laughs> it was never now. Enjoying that's really yeah, cute. Yeah, six years of that. Yeah, I know. I know. And and as and and as the memory care units was built, and last October my son from Germany came and we took a tour, and Linda said, "So, Dwayne, what do you think?" And he said, "Well, it's really nice, but I'm not ready for this yet." Mm -hmm. And we were thinking, in two months he would be there, but he wasn't ready for that yet. So he was never ready for that yet, but he was fully aware of his loss of memory. Mm -hmm. He knew that. Sure. He was aware of that. Sure. And he would forget it right away, but he always, you know. So, so all these years you were basically a caregiver. Because, In the, yes. I mean, medication yes. and things, you couldn't rely on him to take his no. own medication. I remember the day that became apparently clear to me, um, very clear to me, was I heard him in the bedroom with some pills. I heard the pills. I said, what are you doing? I said, he said, I'm taking Tylenol. I have a headache. I said, I gave you Tylenol half an hour ago. You can't have any more right now. Oh, and I thought, okay, time to lock up the meds. Mm -hmm. So I, from then on, they were all med locked up and then he had to ask me for a Tylenol. Mm -hmm. And he was, they tried to give him some medication for for Alzheimer's or whatever, you know, and none of it worked. In fact, it worked backwards. It made it worse. It made his anxiety worse. It made everything worse. So I said, enough of this. He was laying on the couch in pain and hating everything and, you know, I have a headache, blah, blah, for till noon. Mm. And as you know, that's when we do everything. Yes. <laughs> it's in the morning. Oh, absolutely. So it's, it was, you know, yeah. yeah. Mm. And other systems that you can think of as a caregiver, other caregivers might want to know. How did systems work for you? Was that good to set set up different? You mean I know a routine? You had a schedule. Mm -hmm. Routine. Yeah. Schedule. It it, it happens. You set well. I did. I'm very organized, however, <laughs> and very pragmatic. So when I see a problem, I solve it, and I'm organized. So it was, might be different for me than other people, but. I made adjustments like the pills, okay? We're locking these up. And he went with me to buy the, we bought a toolbox because I wasn't gonna spend 150 bucks on a first aid kit. Right. So we bought a toolbox and I got a lock and a key. And he went with me because he knew exactly what we were doing. And he was very okay with that, very okay mm -hmm. with that. Well, and so you find the systems, you find the routine as you go along. When I found the chicken salad in the pantry, <laughs> you know, I knew that, okay, there's one more thing, and the chocolate syrup in the freezer and the ice cubes in the refrigerator, uh -huh. those were all things, okay, now I have to monitor and adjust, adjust this, figure that out. Freezer door left open. Um, this is a good story. One day, and this was years ago, this was several years ago, we bought some Pepsi at the store. We had a small freezer in the closet, and I, it, and he, his job was to unpack the Pepsi and put it on a, these shelves that we had just for extra food. Mm -hmm. We were kind of Costco. We haven't graduated from Costco. Oh, and so we, everything's in bulk. <laughs> so he, his job was to put the cans on the shelf. And that was fine. He, I thought he did that. And the next day, I went into that closet, and there was a Pepsi can on the floor. And I thought, what is that doing there? And I, and I looked, and I went, the freezer door is open. There's Pepsi all over the place. He unpacked the Pepsi into the freezer instead of on the shelf. So I said to him, I'm cleaning this up and you are carrying this down to the car and you are taking it to Savers and get rid of this freezer. We can't have a freezer. Mm -hmm. And he accepted that. Every one of those, every time there was a new awareness, he uh -huh. accepted it uh -huh. very okay. Interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it was, it was easy for me because he didn't fight it. Mm -hmm. And I've read stories where it's, it's not always true. Mm -hmm. The day I told him, you're not driving anymore. Okay, fine. Mm -hmm. And then I read about someone that took, it took her two years for her husband to admit that he couldn't drive. So it's, mm -hmm. everybody's different. Sure. And he accepted all of that. 
Right. And as a teacher, I mean, just saying that uh, you you want him to accept different things, but he did because you're both teachers and you yeah. had to. You're really teaching new new uh, new thoughts. And he was new totally actions, totally dependent on me, <clears throat> and even from the very beginning. Um, I mean, I tell this I t to say to people, one of the reasons I married him was because all he wanted was me. And then I grew up. Yeah. <laughs> and he never <laughs> left yeah. that. that and as, he, yeah. as the dementia and aging and retirement got into the, our daily lives, sure. that got worse. Sure. That was, he did not me talking to anybody. We would be walking the halls and I would stop to talk to someone. He didn't like that. Other men don't even get close to me. You know, nothing. It was he was very possessive and untrusting, untrusting. Mm -hmm. And he's always been possessive, but he trusted me. Mm -hmm. No, and it wasn't that he didn't trust me; he didn't trust anyone else. Mm -hmm. So even close relationships with women, women were not okay. So he just didn't want me away from him at all, and that progressed. Mm -hmm. And he didn't like that. I mean, he didn't understand that. He didn't, he didn't argue with me about getting rid of the freezer, but he, we did argue about, he, did, he thought he had a perfect reason for being possessive and not allowing me to move anywhere, mm -hmm. you know. And I would do activities and he would come and look for me mm -hmm. several times and everybody saw that. He'd stop mm -hmm. in the beauty shop. Sure. He'd say, nope, Dwayne, Peggy's not here today. She must be making beads or something. But, you know, check the mail four or five times a day, take out the garbage two or three times a day. That all increased. You know, everything was more times than the time before. Mm -hmm. So that's the advance of it. And, every, and you asked about systems, so each time that happened, then I had to adjust. And they tell you, do not say, why did you put this in here? You don't do that, and that's very difficult not to do warning everybody that's mm -hmm. hard to go oh you put the ice cream in the refrigerator isn't that nice now we have soup no you don't say anything you just fix it and shut up mm -hmm. that's not easy mm -hmm. because his brain possibly is working different anyway so he could take that all wrong or different or something what yeah are he, their thoughts on that well I would think, I think that's if a good I point. usually put myself in that place which I can't really but if, you, if someone was reminding you how wrong you are all day long, that's not a good thing to do okay. for children or anyone else. That's right. You don't want to be reminded of your disability over and over again. Mm -hmm. You know, treat me like a human being and treat me like a regular person. Mm -hmm. And that's what they suggest you do. I'm just sure. saying it's very difficult sure. to, because you're yeah. upset. You, you don't want to see those things mm -hmm. as the caretaker. You don't want to see that. Right. And then when you do, you have to go, oh, okay, fine. <laughs> no, it's not fine. <laughs> so. I, I can relate to that in one way because um, as a teacher for memory care, we're not to say, do you remember? Mm -hmm. We don't really even use the word remember. You're right. So, so there are a lot of different things. Um, Peggy, tell me a little bit about when the time came that Duane went into the memory center and because you're at the residence side of that center, tell me how that went. Uh, just a little bit, you don't have to go into all the details, but maybe you wanna share something because that will happen when the spouse or uh, father, mother, anything like that will leave the home and go into a, a memory center care home. Well, because it was in the same facility or the same building area or the same location, modified that to be two floors of assisted living and one floor of memory care. So it was very easy for me. Um, I've read of people having to drive 100 miles to move their person, you know, their spouse or their family member to a place. It was easy for that, the, the physical part of leaving. But the night before he moved, it was his birthday. So everybody was here and we went out to dinner mm -hmm. and that was cool that was very nice and then grandchildren you know everything and then uh, the next day 
of course, he didn't know. We did not tell him he was moving. I absolutely did not want to do that. Um, I think he knew something was up, but we, um, it was a Wednesday, and so we did our regular thing. We left our room at 8 o'clock, and we walked, and we went down to have coffee, and then we went to Tai Chi, which was the 9 o'clock class. And after Tai Chi, there was a community meeting. And the minute I got him out of the apartment, my family arrived. And they started moving everything of his down to his room because I had to furnish that one bedroom apartment. So I did all the ordering online and it all came and, and that was, that's another story, but um, that was hard too. But anyway, the day that we went, and then, then after Tai Chi was a meeting and I was to keep him out of out of the room for as long as possible so my family could move all of his things. We had to move a chair. We took three chairs out of our apartment mm -hmm. and then his personal belongings, a computer, a TV. No, the TV was there. We bought a new one. Um, but his clothes, all of his clothes had to go. Um, you can just imagine all of his personal belongings, his toothbrushes, you know, all of that had to go, like, quickly. Well, they did it very quickly. There were young men there and women and it happened very quickly and so then we went to a community meeting after Tai Chi so this was about 10 o'clock and then after the community meeting we might just want to jump into yeah and right after the, the community meeting my son and his daughter came and we took him over to his new place thank God you had your family there. oh yes oh yeah thank God yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there were nine people that <laughs> were there that day to help move him. Yeah. Four, 14 for dinner the night before, yeah. and then nine people. Wow. So, and that was it then. Yeah, mm -hmm. yes, yes, yes. And he was not happy. Mm. He was, he said, I'm not staying here. And he said, where are you going? I said, I can't be here. Well, I'm not staying here. So, mm -hmm. it was... It wasn't easy. No, no. No, and I believe that a lot of people watching this will say, oh boy, can I relate to this one. I, I have some friends personally that I know have gone through that, so I, I know this isn't easy. To and you do. need to have people around. <laughs> you need to have help to do yes. that. Um, yes. My son said, I was here for, I was here for dad and Missy, my granddaughter, she's here for you. I'm like, I don't need her. <laughs> and, I, and, you know, they didn't know, they didn't know how I was going to react. So he had that covered, you know. So the three, the, the three of us took him to his room. Mm -hmm. And he, as he realized where he was going, he stopped. You know, I'm not going there. Where am I going? Because he thought he was going back to the room. Even though I explained it to him. I said, here's what we're doing. And he was like this, okay, okay, okay. I went, well, that was easy. He didn't understand one thing I said. He did not know. So, Which, which that was says, it. yeah. there was no looking back. No, he had no. to do that. And, and um, after he, I was under the, in, I was under the information, I had been given the information that I wasn't supposed to be visiting him for two weeks. And then the person that told me that asked me if I had seen him, so I thought, mm -hmm. okay. So anyway, I started to go visit him, and it was brutal. That's good. That's but when good. I went back, so. to, when I went to visit him, uh -huh. he was in another world. And then we realized he probably had been for a very long time, or for a while, that we that I didn't realize because he didn't he didn't say anything. He wasn't communicating anyway. Um, it, but I was, you know, I was looking at this date as, so it was a mess. The, the, you know, when you know, when one person knows the day you're moving out of here, but he doesn't know that. Mm -hmm. So, but, but he had been, his dementia had been getting worse without me realizing it. Because when I went back to visit him, he was in a completely different world. He knew me, um, but when I, the first time I went there and I went in his room and, and the kids had made framed pictures, 
they went through my albums and took pictures and framed them and had like 10 mm -hmm. frames all over the place, you know, on shelves and stuff. We had the room really, really beautifully put together. And um, he, everything that was laid out to make it look good, he put it in a pile. And I, I, when we went back to his room, I said, oh, I went into the dining room and I said to the caretaker, I said, what's going on in his room? And she said, he's packing. I thought, oh, lovely. So when we went back, I, I said to him, um, what is this all about? I said, we need to put these things back where they belong. You, we're not going anywhere. And I did, and he was fine with that. And then the next time I went to him, it was all packed up again. And then, he, and then it was gone, and he threw everything away. Everything that could move was thrown away. Couldn't find a shaver. We found it in a shoe in the closet, mm -hmm. and then we couldn't find it at all. So I had I've bought three shavers. So and then when I would visit, and then I went in his room, and I thought, well, I can sit here for you know. And he said, I know where you live. I said, oh, do you? He says, yes, right right across from me, right there, where those red umbrellas are. I said, and I broke the rule of don't correct him. I could not could not let him think I was moving there. Mm -hmm. So I said, no, I don't live there. Yes, you do. I saw you having a party last night. I said, I don't live there, Dwayne. Well, where do you live? Then I was stuck. I, know, well, I said, well, when I look out my window, I see the pool. And he had this moment of remembrance. And he said, oh. And then that was over. Very good. But I sat down to watch TV, and he says, so where are we going after this? Do you have anything else to do today? So he had no, he had no record, he had no idea what he was doing or where he was or, or that we weren't in our old apartment and watching TV. You know, it was, it was like, and that was a, not that I didn't intellectually know that he had dementia, but that was like, whoa, do you ever? And that was way more worse for that, like one several days than I thought he was. He didn't. He didn't get worse in four days. He was that bad, but I didn't see it oh, wow. because he just yeah. depended on me. He stuck with me. He did whatever I, wherever I went. He went when I went to bed. He went to bed. You know. So it it, it that's an interesting realization. Yes. Because I wasn't expecting him to exhibit those signs of dementia that quickly but take me out of the picture he went he fell apart mm -hmm. yes understand. so then when i would leave he would say where the hell is my wife when's my damn wife getting back here mm -hmm. so then they suggested i not come back for two weeks two to four weeks the evaluator for our insurance long-term insurance policy suggested that and I went, yay, because I don't want to go there. <laughs> I don't want to sure. go there. Sure. And so they, we settled on two weeks. And at the end of the two weeks, he had a girlfriend. So hmm. I haven't gone back right. at all. Right. And you know, I've heard that from, um, I, there is a dementia foundation in South Africa. And uh, Karen, the lady that has founded that, she and I have been working together on uh, different situations and the videos that we're doing and such. And she has mentioned that on several occasions, that it happens. Yes. Oh, it, it happened sure to Sandra Day O'Connor. She wrote a book. And she would go to visit her husband, and she said it was like visiting her children or brother and, you know, her brother and sister. It was, and the reason that I chose not to go was because I didn't want to confuse him. And my granddaughter said, and you don't want to mess up her life either. You don't, you don't, you don't need to do that, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. What's the point? Mm -hmm. I don't have any need to go and prove who I am. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Not necessary. Sure, I understand. Yeah. Peggy, this has been great. I just can't thank you enough. No problem. I'd like you to think if there's anything that you really stands out in your mind that you would like either families, uh, spouse, friends, anyone that watches the video, you want them to really understand that this happens and maybe bring up a couple 
instances? Well, there's one thing that I heard not too long ago that I think is worth memory, remembering or understanding is that because when we all get to this age, um, we start thinking everything that happens to us, it must be dementia, I'm losing my mind, I've got Alzheimer's. And someone told me once that if you forget, and we all forget, we forget where we put things, we don't find, can't find our keys, we go in a room, we don't know why we're there. If you forget and you remember that you forgot, you're normal. If you forget and you don't remember you forget, that's that now you need to be worried about dementia and Alzheimer's because he did not ever know he forgot. It was all a new thing in his mind. You know, it was everything starts from scratch. Mm -hmm. I think so often of that movie of the girl that had an accident. I can't remember if, what the name of the movie was, but she had an accident and on her birthday and every morning she woke up it was her birthday. She relived that same day. Do you remember that movie? Mm. She relived that same day every single day of the rest of her life. And her her um, husband or her fiance and her father had a birthday party for her every single day. Now you could feel guilty about not doing that <laughs> because well maybe I should have been doing that. No. No, that's that's a great movie, but yeah, you can't do that. You know, you can't mm -hmm. you can't say, "Oh, I should be doing more." Mm -hmm. No, nothing you can do. Yeah, that's a great. Point. Just let it go. Because caregivers tend to do that, be very hard on themselves. Yes, and um, the Linda, who was the uh, activity director when I, we moved in there. Mm -hmm. And she noticed, uh, you know, they all started noticing, especially when we went on a cruise. They noticed that Dwayne was, had dementia and when I, and he'd been diagnosed with it and we got on the assisted living list and stuff. And Linda said, do not think that you, this is your job. She said, I've been here so long and have watched caretakers die before the people they are taking care of. And I don't want that happening to you. Oh, yes. So, great point. That was, and, and you don't feel guilty. Oh, this is my job. No, it's not your job. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's not. Yeah, good for you. So, well, that's, that's wonderful. Thank you so much. You're Peggy. welcome. I really appreciate this. I'm glad I could help. Okay.